that capture the ribosomes at different functional states. It is already 11 years old and made it together with art students of the Academy in Jerusalem called the Tereb. And you can find it in the new YouTube if you like it. So here, the messenger is coming to the sponsor room. Pay attention. Behind here and later on, there will be a lot of blue particles. These are factors which are non-ribosomal factors. The first ones that have to be there in order to start are called initiation factors. In particular, there are three, and what I am showing you now is the ribosome form. A typical bacteria, actually several typical bacteria together, because they are so similar. So the messenger reaches the smallest of your meat. We should look, look, look now, now it goes round and we take it. Chop, did you see? So we took it. Now this chop looks very easy. It's only, only this, this little part, maybe we go back. And we start again. Okay. So we have also a better side. So this, this motion that I just showed you looks very little. From a chemical point of view, it's very large. Because this stuff is a quarter of a million in molecular weight. So look now. No, 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 no. Sure. Like, like a, a lash in watches. On, off, on, off. When the messenger comes in, and also when it progresses in each time in a problem, and I'm sure you know problems are three nuclear cells. So this is the first, the first division factor, it's called number three, that stands here and will go out. After the first position, which is called the peak side, is being occupied by the first TRNA. So you will see here the two factors left. IF3 and IF2, the TRNA sits with the minor sit, messenger is here, and the last subunit is getting close. Last subunit fits the small subunit according to complementary, but in order to make the complementary contact better, it also produces bridges, chemical bridges, by conformational bridges, like this. So now we have an active battery. And it's ready to continue. So more and more TRNAs, these uh, organisms are being bought by elongation factors, the clip. All TRNAs have proteins, and the peptide code is being made here, which is the tiny in the last unit. And you can see in out, in out, the ribosome pairs. So when I say that we have integrated several structures, this was mainly for these motions. Because in some structures where TRNA had to go out, the head, this head, was open and in some it was closed. And we suggested that the way from here to here is according to that, that motion, not something like this. And afterwards it was found in other structures, so this is what you see is now fully uh, experimental. So we took a very large unit. You can see how peptide body is being made fast, correctly, and the TRNA changes its conformation a little. I won't talk about it today, but it's really important. And the process continues. More and more amino acids are being bought by TRNAs. The TRNAs go out, can do the work, messenger progresses, and the protein comes out from the other side of the tunnel and falls. I alone or with chaperones. When there is a stop problem, then instead of TRNA factor stars, we say shiny gold, these factors are separating. They are recycling and um, recycling factors and separating factors. And now the two subunits are ready for the next job. The protein can go and go with me, and the TRNA can go with the TRNA molecules and look for next, next job. So actually what we saw in the movie was very uh, fuzzy. I just want to show you that we know the position of every single atom in the bacterial ribosome, which is the protein is the most of the molecules. As we 
as we can with this structure, actually this structure was determined also in February and the positions of the atoms are the same because it's correct. The ribosome is made of RNA and proteins. The small subunit is 1,600 nucleotides, depending on the source. This is the gray color. And the proteins are in different colors. Each protein in a different color, up to 21 proteins, usually 20. And each picture on here, and you see most of them are hanging on the outside and sending a the extensions into the structure. It segments at 30 years, so this is its nickname, and this is the small subunit, which does decoding. The large subunit is the same color, many more proteins, up to 34 in bacteria. Again, this is the way we determine, and molecular weight one to 5 million and two RNA chains, total 3,000 nucleotides. It makes a peptide bond, it elongates it, it means it works as a polymerase, and it protects the protein in the So, this is more or less what our zone is. This is bacteria. My problem is that we, we try to understand how our zones work and how the medical is being translated. And as I indicated earlier, earlier, we also look of how to improve antibiotics. This is a bad video any dream I had before, and don't misunderstand me. I was not sure we could even do just the lysosomes. So, what about these bones? First of all, because the fundamental role of the lysosome, it is a target for many antibiotics. Important biosynthesis is important. Almost as important as other things, maybe more. So stopping protein biosynthesis means killing the bacteria. It's better than killing the pathogen. So over 40% of them today, clinical and useful antibiotics target protein biosynthesis. Actually, the first one, penicillin, target cell wall. The second one, the lipomycin and all its brothers and sisters, target virus. So what are the natural antibiotics? The natural antibiotics are the very ones that one type of microorganism is using against another type. For interfering with this life cycle. And we are trying to use them. So the first question, antibiotics have a molecular weight of less than a, less than a thousand, more than many around 500. And the lives of so many of million atoms. How to get antibiotics? How can they paralyze this giant ribosome? And we have to compare it today with the light. Then we have a little, a little stone here. We have to examine this little thing, which was mainly protected. He could target the, the hands, but then the will be He wanted to kill the light, so he, he targeted the forehead. The form is important and exposed, and that's what the antibiotics do in the ribosome. What you see here is the, on the left, the skeleton of the small subunit, large subunit, and the, the box here, each of them represents another family of antibiotics. So they either display messenger binding or TRNA decoding, or peptide transformation, or block the tunnel of the of the motions that are associated with it. And for this we have another movie also in the group, based on the first one. And we try here to explain how four families of antibiotics work as we determine them back in a few years ago. So the first one is adding it's not a useful antibiotics today because it's totally universal. It kills the bacteria and the patient. But it's very interesting and it explains a lot. Here it is, here it's sending, and it doesn't let the messenger be bound or progress. So it blocks the path and also raises emotions. That's the real thing, that's enough. It's not in a factory. You stop one, one step, everything is done. Second, it's better cycling, we use to run the that doesn't let 
the second TLNA and the A side bind. So this is called P side and this is A side, maybe we will make it later. Just doesn't get it bind. Occupies the same the same area. The third one is epitomycin, which is the first one, the target adosome to the negative cells. It's in the time. And it was only very little reported to be men and then lost it. About five to six miles. And it lost the time. And the last one that you see is called clindamycin. And it doesn't let the bone being made. Just sit in the bone. And I want to say again, all this, all of what we show you here are experimental results. There is no not at all, any, any modeling. So we have to see how our pricing works. We I think we can see it better. When we look at the whole lots of women into the tunnel, this is the tunnel. Uh, the dark green is our name, the other is our name, the yellow is the lighter green in our pockets. This is the entrance to the tunnel and the recognizing blocks. So, protein cannot pass. And if, if it pass, it will pass through the target to the oxygen. If you look at it from the side, it's like if you got an apple this way, here is peptide bone formation. You have the one here and then, what we call this side, it means the first side to be occupied, then the side from which the peptide is going. The peptide moves down through the target if it's not blocked by the information. So, let's go to the problems. I think now I should have said an example of how we could understand how antibiotics work and maybe for this understand how to solve their work. But let's go to the problems. First problems. First problem. All antibiotic binds to the algorithm of functional size. I said earlier, all ribosomes are the same way. It means their functional size are highly conserved. And I think that you know that mandatory for clinical use is the distinction between the pathogen and the patient. We don't want to kill the patient. We only want to get rid of the pathogen. So uh, how is this one? So even when there are very, very uh, large the conservation, there is very large conservation, there are sometimes certain differences. And I want to show you one which is the key for macro which is the, uh, the family that came out of erythromycin. So this is the main macro of it, I really don't want to talk about it. And what you see here is a section for the time, so perpendicular to its long axis. And the, the walls are shown in gray, and the type of things inside each of them is an antibiotic. And they all block the tunnel, excellently or just very good, but they block, and all interact with one specific nucleotide in position 2058 according to the equilibrium of momentum 2, and it's adenine. It's adenine in all new bacteria, it means all pathogens. It's not happening in higher organisms. It's only from uh, Althea to human, it's going. So let me show you what I can see. Let's concentrate on the contacts with this one. So this is 2058. And this is the recognition. And here the, the chemical activity is very high. Now the difference between your bacteria and us is actually here. Pay attention. That's the difference. That's all. Your bacteria and us. Go on. So in terms of chemistry, it should be the same. But in terms of structure, this is too close. So they are recognizing very inside, and therefore there is no binding. That's all. That's how all macrolides, which are the most used antibiotics, distinguish between the patient and the and, and a pathogen. So once we understood this, we can also understand some of the resistance. How do the antibiotics require resistance? 
So small business is to modify numbers genetically to make a mutation exactly at the same place, change A to G, for instance, in this, in this, uh, in this example. There are other, there are other, uh, other mechanisms which I want to talk about, and even this I want to talk about, just to say that uh, the resistance is acquired by either mutations from A to G in this particular case, or by production of proteins that can be low finding, like air mutations, which make exactly the same nucleotides when it is created. So, can we find out? Can we find out that it is the resistance? In my opinion, only partially. No matter how, how much companies or scientists will do, from this point of view, it's only partially. Because bacteria want to live. Bacteria were on, on the globe before us, and the pessimists say that they will be also after us. But at least they were before us, and they want to live, and they find ways to protect themselves very quickly. So what, what can be done? Not to combat, maybe, but to control and to minimize and to slow and slow down the appearance. I have produced single compounds with additional samples and many of them, or to make drugs that are made of two compounds, of two different compounds. Each of them may not be very strong, but they have a synergetic effect on each other. So I will show you two examples. One, changing the samples. So this is erythromycin, and in erythromycin, just one more upper was entered to the main ring here. This is the main ring. Just one more upper. Now, when the people in Croatia that produced it in the 80s told me that they are going to make a new compound that will target resistant mutants, I was not very happy about it. I was actually frightened. Because I thought, no, if it binds to G in position 2058, it will also bind to the patient. So this is not what we want. Well, good that I was wrong. Pfizer is selling this, uh, this compound now with a lot of uh, profit. And it is a very good one. So where was I wrong? For this, you can look at the structure of a bacteria, a new bacteria, which is for the corpus of the humans, ours, which is a pathogen model, it's showing here in me. And to have an article, our SMT, which is an article, shown here in, in, in blue. So you can see both bind, as if you want to bind to both. But here it binds a long time, and here it blocks the time. So there are other factors, and for any of them of you, that try to or want to try to improve antibiotics, please remember that there are many factors, not only finding compounds that bind, for instance, here is 258 ALG, but also how. In the pocket, there are other, other components that show binding mode, efficiency, and clinical usefulness. So let's run one, one example on antibiotics with this A. So, on synergism, actually one and a half examples. So this is based, the example that I'm showing you now, is based on the proximity of peptide bone formation, which is shown here in the by the Toronto people that binds to the position, and the tunnel, which is shown in red, the recognizing that they disturb the progression of the newly bone protein. They are both very close to each other. So a, a bacteria, actually a microorganism, that sends it somehow, produced a compound that was afterwards improved by, by a company, and it's all to base in our city, it's already in the market for more than 10 years. And then it was first in the market in Sam, for 10 years. First, first uh, license was given in Sam, France, and Germany. And only a four years later in America. Anyway, it's made of two compounds. One sits in the active site and one in the tunnel. 
Nagrad te ne bih zbog, tako ćeš pogledala da je ali bolj in tako. Sorak vam prišelju. Vih se sečni ne gremi, kar se gledi, da je tudi tam in bol, in pek, one, in second. To je bilo kompletni in on so bilo kompletni. Vrlo kletek. In bakterija ne bih se. Actually, when I heard about it, and we saw my first self, it was like, as a chemist, as a chemist, we thought, let's combine the two of them, right? Let's do separate ones. Let's make it one compound. Well, I thought we were not the only one that thought so. I believe that they were faster, and they combined it, and they failed faster too. Why did they fail? Because the combined uh, compound did not enter the radius, it was too large, actually, in many cells, it did enter the same, and even when it entered, it did sit directly. But more than this, once we saw the structure, we saw that it does something much more than it does enter. So here, you see the active side, here one tyranny, the A, and the T side of tyranny, and please focus on this nucleotide, it sits exactly where the factory boat is being made. This one, this red right one, and by the single. This nucleotide is very flexible. So if you look at it now from top, here is the, the nucleotide, and compound A comes in. This is the A, A side tyranny, and this is the B, compound C. Compound A kicks it out. Because it's very flexible. But, life is small, so the pressure of life brings the nuclear type back to the center and picks out compound A. But there is separate of compound A, like every time it comes to the radius. So it comes and picks it out again. And I could play this game for a long time if there is no compound B. Compound B comes and locks the situation. So now not only they block the timing, they also change the active side. The active side is not in existence anymore. It is changed. So this is much more important than the drugs to get the thing. So what they talked about is in the city, and what we are working on uh, is a similar, a similar couple that is produced by one last week of S. Oshi that was first isolated in Sri Lanka. Therefore, the two compounds are called Lanka City, Lanka Mansi, and we call it Lanka Lanka, and the, Lanka, the Sri Lanka people are very So we, are, we know now how these two are bound. They are interacting with each other very well in the time between the active side, and also change the, the position of this particular nucleotide and make it very right to bound CR, so bound of the people alone. It's very really weak, but we are trying to improve it. At least we are trying to do something for uh, the resistance. You can imagine that when the compound is very large, when the antibiotic is very large, the two parts of resistance will be much slower. But uh, as we have heard earlier, the R strains, real, real strains, real pathogen strains, not only models, as I talked about now, everything was normal that they have their own way of acquiring resistance, and therefore we try not to understand it. And we are almost at the end of determining the structure of Stadaos, and maybe also Macrophobus, Macrobacterium, and Maris. So we did, we don't, until now we talked only about, I talked only about the future, but we also looked for, for the past. We found in the ribosome a region that made us thinking about how life started. So if you look at the two active regions in the ribosome here and here, they are made only of RNA. Here is the affected bone is being made and here is the decoding. Only RNA. Which means that the ribosome, the ribosome is a ribosome. It is an RNA enzyme. When children, when I ask children, what do you mean about, what, what do you understand from me? The children say, this is to, to avoid the uh, 
people to avoid bias. Because if the same type of model says to make it safe, it may be biased by internal love or hate. But this is just different, these two different types of models. And I think the children are not okay, they are correct, and they are uh, talking about sophisticated regulation. But it also may be in, in, in agreement with the idea that RNA existed before proteins, that there was an RNA weight before there were proteins, DNA, or cells, just like this. So we looked into the ribosome and we think that we were able to identify a exactly the same region that I talked all the time about, which includes the active side, which is about 3 to 4 percent of the RNA of all ribosomes from bacteria to human. We think that this is a remnant of the prebiotic bonding machine that was existing and functioning before life and is still functioning in the modern ribosome. This is our opinion. In the modern ribosome, this is this region, and it is connecting between all the functional sites, the hands and the messenger. And I just want to show you its size. This is its size. This is the way it looks this day, this day substrate, and this is the way the capital bomb is being made right there. And the machine itself, what we think, looks like this one. And I want to show you a bit larger with two ends of TRNAs. I talked to chemists, and chemists say that this could be an entity that can function in the right size and the right, and the right shape, and we are trying now to uh, prove it. I just want to tell you, it has the same, exactly the same structure in all known structures. And exactly the same sequence. So here we have five structures that were known 10 years ago, one on top of the other, they look exactly the same. And also, they are the same in eukaryotes. Although their molecular weight is much higher, the original structure of eukaryotes here is a bit more detailed. All the addition from 2.5 million to 4 million of eukaryotes is on the surface. Like you see here, all the additions. Here you can see the protein additions and the RNA additions. The inside is the same, even in eukaryotes. This is, this is not the way. What you see here is this, the mitochondria, and another small eukaryote, they're all the same. So, we propose that this is uh, this photo of ribosome was before life and possible pathway are based, uh, based on RNA existence and its ability to replicate itself. It means it could be the genetic of itself. And we call it, as I told you earlier, photo ribosome. And this may give us some hints about the emerging of the genetic code. The initial Depeptides that were made could be the substrate of depeptides and oligopeptides. And these oligopeptides that were useful, Darwinianly useful, could exist as this. So what I'm showing you here, what does it mean useful? A little protein, this is a very little protein, that can transport metals or those that stabilize the machine that made them in these positions. Which is exactly what happens with in the ribosome. Here there is one that stabilizes, and here there is another one. And this says that the genetic code co evolves together with the ribosome and with the products, the proteins. So, how about the chicken and the eggs? What was first? The genetic code of the proteins. Now we can ask this. We can even answer. Neither protein of the code, nor protein. The proper ribosome was before both. So, ribosome is a, the ribosome, ribosomes are usually very lousy and lazy. Proteins in the ribosome make them efficient. So again, just to show you the two subunits and how the proteins sit them together and make them efficient. A few words about the timing. 
And we talk about bears, and we talk about rivers, and we talk about antibiotics. So a few words about this. When we started, more or less, when you got to the book, it was what was known, it was known that there are algorithms, that they translate it in medical, and they can do it correctly. At the beginning of 1980 or the end of 1979, when I suggested to see what is the structural basis of the survival of the country, means understanding all of the people in the world here, people laugh at me, but they say it nicely, they say, you must be eating. And I also say, I don't think that we know about the algorithms, it's already known. And then I say, I want to see the interna, he said, that's a black box. So, what made me going? I was the answer to this at that time. Go and get zero. So first of all, I don't want to go into much detail, but we need to use the cellulose in order to see interatomic distances. So far, this is the only way. For this, we need results. And because there are no uh, lenses of results, we look at diffraction. So here you can see diffraction. Please ignore everything except for this point here. B is coming and B is infected. In long and short, it uh, is intense and weak. In the uh, diffraction in many, many directions. So the diffraction is based on a mathematical function that the materials, no, it's also yet and so. If you want to build back the, 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 the material that you want to understand, you have to know how to do it. It needs to make back to the transform. So in, a, in short, we need results. We have diffraction. We have to correct the diffraction. So here it is, for instance, on the film. And we have to do it in the whole sphere. Then we have to map everything together. So this we need computers, but also this is the here. We get maps that look like a, a tomorrow mesh. We show where the electrons are. And I didn't even tell how to do it. We need a lot of more information, but at the end, we can see where the atoms are around the electrons that we see. And they are very, very accurately, or enough, accurately enough to understand the electrons. But we need salt. So we need crystals. So, just a normal soul that you put on your on your uh, on your um, salad. <laughs> it's, it's made of two atoms, sodium and chloride, and we can imagine you know, some density makes crystals. So this is a crystal of sodium and chloride. It is theoretically compact in this direction, in this, and in this three dimensions. This is a crystal. So, okay, natural products do it. Even proteins could be crystallized. You see a large one that was crystallized first in Oxford in the 60s, and a sixth diagram means a eleven years old kid could repeat it if it's possible. But these guys that you saw earlier, can you tell all of them to stand this way so much? Not to the same functional state, and you saw how flexible they are. So when I started, there were papers and articles saying it would be very rational, but actually they said it's impossible. And they explained why. Why this is considered non crystallizable Why others are considered non crystallizable Because they have a high degree of internal mobility, considerable flexibility, functional heterogeneity, they have many structures, Chemical complexity, you could see this. Large size of an asymmetric nature, you could see it in the structures. And I think that the most important one was not tendency to deteriorate. And ribosomes, when they are prepared, even if only 50% of them are active, it means they make proteins according to the, to the uh, components that you find in the, in the preparation. This is not a good preparation. It means only 50% of the, the structure. The others are different. How, how can they crystallize? Also, 
ainda tem 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 Without him, I had brain compression and I had to be hospitalized. And when I recovered, I had time to read. So I read all types of things, not only science. And I read about a document that the television that went to the North Pole uh, to see what is the metabolism of bears when they are sleeping during the winter, what's happening. So they had five pages of uh, of observations, and one little sign of observation said that in the inner side of their cells, of their sleeping bell cells, the ribosomes are organized periodically. Ah, so this told me first thing that ribosomes can be organized. Human beings couldn't do it, but bears do. I don't know if bears do, but nature gives bears the mechanism to do. Every bear, every winter. It means it's a mechanism, it's not an accident. So second thing I had to think of on my own, why should this happen? So in my opinion, this was the way that birds maintained a big pool of active ribosomes, not the terrible ribosomes. Because when they get up in the end of the winter, they have to do all types of things they didn't do while they were asleep. They have to, to look for friends and food and whatever. So for this they need proteins, and for proteins they need ribosomes. And this is how we really can keep the ribosomes until the end of the winter. So, here we go, there is a new idea. Many people have listened to any of our reports, and they try to they say that it's probably cold to be making the cold temperature. So they took, they took 30 nice eggs of chicken and of pizza, Put it in the fridge, and if you see me, the ribosomes are organized. It is. And you can see beautiful organizations here. And especially under in the beginning, the beginning, and then under in the beginning, they got to me, and they tried to, to understand some of the structure. It was okay, but it had a memory, and it, it was very, very low detail, very, very low detail. I thought that called maybe the reason. But in my opinion, in my, it was more than close. In my opinion, every stress could be used to a little bit of Because in my opinion, it was, this is the, uh, the way to keep the eyes from deteriorating. So, if this, is, if this is the case, the solution was to take ribosomes from bacteria. We also wanted bacteria because we wanted to understand how they were this. To take ribosomes from bacteria that grow under very harsh conditions, extreme conditions, like in the Dead Sea, or in a hot springs, or in race of atomic, atomic pilots, atomic facilities. So the Dead Sea is the lowest harm point in the world and also the most salty one. And the least thing is not the so it's like this, and we also do a procedure that let us keep the ribosomes one more day uh, alive, and it left. So first, for all those of you that didn't see the Dead Sea, this is the Dead Sea from top, the satellite, and this is from floor. What you see here is salt. It comes out because it's oversaturated. And as I said, it's the lowest part and also very hot. Although it is so, so hostile, some bacteria are going there. You see here? Some colonies of heteroatronomous protein. And here you can better. So what you see here is evaporation from January to September, 70 centimeters. In bacteria, you see there. So use this bacteria as a source of ribosomes. Use also bacteria that grows under atomic parts. It's called the Anthropos Rabiduras. It's almost like E. coli, but it can survive every bad condition. Under Heat, cold, whatever you want. 
it, it has a secret. Only photography is, is functioning. The other three are like a storage for less uh, damage power, so that it won't talk about the material now. And essentially, we got the first map of this that's happening after we started. Pay attention. We used many, many conditions, but in a very efficient way. So in six months, we got already those ones. And later on, we got much nicer ones. And actually, we have many, many recent forms now. And six years after we started, we thought that we could go and measure. So measuring uh, results of such complex uh, articles have to be done by in facilities, usually international facilities. Uh, uh, the one in the model is only started only after we are already done in half work. But I'm showing it to you because you always it's in Europe. Very beautiful place, fantastic building. Rivers and snow and whatever in the northern of South here. And I think that you're going to have one in Barcelona, or over here. But anyway, looks very nice on top. Very big place when you get close. Very hard to go from station to station. Okay, by bicycles. And the idea is that particles are being accelerated and run out. And we see it in the tangential of them, and starting, not exactly us, but the single from of making stations to measure. So this is the experimental So we came in 1986, six years after we started. And we got a fantastic diffraction pattern, much beyond any dream of any of us that took them. Just wonderful. Clear spots to the edge. The edge means high resolution. We were in heaven, not so long. Less than a second. It's all done. All goes done. All the hard resolution. So we try to understand why the deterioration is so bad. But first of all, I want to show you what we felt. We felt that we climbed this mountain, we came from here, we came from here, and it looks like Everest, we climbed and climbed. And then we got to the top. And then we discovered that the real Everest is far away, still far away. And we have to go Everest after Everest. And the way will be longer and seem to be even more difficult. So this was the time to stop the, the project. But we decided to try to understand why the deterioration is so large. I don't want to go into detail, I just want to say that before the Two steps in the deterioration of the damaging of the crystals, one by the XOAB, we cannot avoid this, but the other is the propagation of the um, damage, and this we thought that we can uh, stop or minimize by not giving energy, it means by flash cooling. The bio temperatures, this was not done in biological. Until then, it was again saying it's impossible, and I don't want to go into the details here. I just want to show you the experiment that was done in Stanford, and together with half of Bob. And if you look at my face, <laughs> you can see that I was not really sure that uh, we were going to make it, but we did. The same evening we did, we got beautiful pictures. I'm still happy 20 years later. This is the machine. In the novel. And I want to show you what happens, what happens in the way. So until 87, we did a turn in November 86. Until 87, the number of crystals that were determined per year were more or less here. Less than 100. Here the largest number is 50,000. PDB depositions, everybody that determines such a distribution of ordinance to the 40 day Qatar International, except for the company, second to the world. So here we introduced the cryo crystallography. At the same time, also, phasing became more easy and better detectors, and look what happened. And now we are here, 80,000. Within four months, it became 
the NATO community, the only community. So now it's time to thank the Lord to thank the Lord to my secret that the Lord did to work for the almost 20 years of what was sold in the way of the dream. Or I was a dream, I was a fantastic man. Matthew Sela made the decision. Simon Harry did not change. The scientific advisory committee had. It all started in a very small, very intensive collaboration with the Slot Institute in Berlin. This is also Whitman. The whole institute died so badly. But Whitman died 10 years before the structure came and he was replaced by Francesi and then by Puccini. I have to thank my researchers. So if you could see the previous one, Dr. Whitman was very helpful in setting up a research, a big research unit for us in the single home in Abu. And we started this with everyone. And therefore, I have two groups in Paraguay, one in Abu, one in Israel. So I want to thank the group members in both places. You can see here the Abu group that was closed in 2004. You see that the people came to the Dead Sea to look for better, better bacteria, then better time. And we had angels because the technical assistance said to work on this. On this uh, Project now has to be an angel. I want to show you the Israeli group. Yes, so. Oops. I want to show you the Israeli group that is actually run by Dr. Anna Kashan. She is a senior scientist. She was a student with us. She has been for 20 years. And she does the work that I am entertaining you. I don't want to go one by one. I just want to show you the map. And actually, I want to for the young female here. I want to say that Anat, Anat Bashan has three kids, and she is doing fantastic science. Ella has two kids, and she is doing fantastic science. Ra also has three kids, but he doesn't count, he is a man. What I'm trying to say here is that it's possible for female to do science and to have family. So look at the map. She also has three children. She came 13 years ago for 10 weeks. She's still there. And in the next, I took the picture she had there, and she made it big. So it shows that female scientists know even the baby. Look at her face. So it shows that in my group, I was often sick and sweet. And I want to thank my family more than anything else, because uh, they kept up with me in my presence and absence always. I show you my daughter, who is an MD. And her daughter, but also my mother and so on. I just want to show you female resources. She said when she was 13 that I always had time for her, although I was very busy. And that she invited me to find for a little girl. She not only said it, she also gave me advice. So do you think that this is the double beta? This is the biggest class. Now I try to decrease and decrease this one. The grammar of the is that I There is no yield I asked her, which year? And she said, which year? And we give you which book it said. And we give you fair and take of the law. So it's all in the same as the law. You see? I want to show you that I don't see them. For people on the internet, you can get the eyes on this. And you can't have the eyes on the law. And you can't have the eyes on the law. This is the camera, even young children. <laughs> and I want to show you what I'm doing. So, if you look at it carefully, this is the small of the unit, this is the last of the unit, and it's a And there is an, and you know, the periodic, the artist came in his mind. Thank you.